This is the aftermarket report with Vegas and Jim. Today's date is December the 30th, 2018. One more day left in the year. I'm going to hand this right over to Miss Vegas. Okay, well, good afternoon, everyone. Hope you guys are enjoying your weekend, and a lot of people are still off on holidays because they're not coming back to trading till after New Year's, Jan 2nd. And uh, so if you're still away, enjoy your time off. Okay, so today we have quite the list. Um, usually on Sundays, our list is a little bit longer just because we have the time to actually, um, you know, plan and look at more charts together. So we are going to talk about ASTC, AEY, FUV, PQG, APHA, VTVT. And you know what? Jim might even throw a bonus today if he's in a good mood. <laughs> so... <laughs> um, so let's first start with ASTC. Now, ASTC is Astrotech Corporation. You guys know I've talked about the stock. I actually talked about this last Sunday. So if you don't follow and subscribe, you are missing out. Because we talked about this last Sunday and we talked about the chart and we said there probably should be a potential breakout on the stock. And you know what? That stock had a beautiful move. Um, so definitely, you know, subscribe and follow. But anyhow, ASTC, company located in Texas, and um, they had a really nice move, some nice action on the chart, nice volume. And um, they are expecting, you know, based on the weekly chart, an actual continuation of the actual stock. And uh, Jim was taking a look at the chart, and uh, I'd like Jim to talk about what he sees because... Sometimes he sees things a little different than myself. So, Jim, you tell us what you see on uh, ASTC. Well, what I see on ASTC in, was that we called this out last week, right after a good breakout and a thing we said it might be in for a continuation. We also called to pull back on it for the rebound, and it did exactly what we said. So the first thing I'm going to do is look at the chart. I'm looking at a yearly chart. We see that we got higher highs all week long last week. After that big breakout, it pulled back, pulled back right to support level, and then it bounced on up each day, creating a higher high. And then last Friday, we had the big breakout where it went up to about 550, and it kind of held pretty good. I mean, it closed at 529. So actually, to me, that it could have went down lower. It could have went back down to 5 bucks at that last uh, support level, but it didn't. So we were all bullish on it last week, and I'm going to pull up the 20-day chart. I got this all charted out right now because we were playing it. You see on the 20-day chart, all the moving averages are moving up, and we have that trend. And then it broke out of that trend Friday and kind of created a little flag right here. So it could go either way. It could pull back maybe to this support level right here of right around 5 bucks at the most to keep, it, to keep the trend going. Or it could fall back down here to this other trend level, which is right around 475. So what I'm thinking is we don't want it to go no lower than $5. If we do get a pullback, its support's going to be right around 517. And I'm going to look at this yearly chart one or look at the daily. And I'll just show you how beautiful that run was on the daily chart. It ran up and it pulled back. You know, it ran up, pulled back and hit these moving averages. And then we stopped here at the, uh, 100, the uh, 200 SMA. And then we bounced up after hours to 529. So let's keep this on watch. I'm not saying jump in it right now, but definitely watch it for a momentum play. And I'm going to look at the one year just one more time real fast. You see what I'm saying here? We've had three beautiful breakouts on this stock. And it pulled back that first breakout. And it continuation this time. So this is showing something a little bit different. A little bullish, more bullish of a pattern to me. And that's going to be ASTC. And the next one we're going to talk about is a Vegas special here, AEY. Okay, so AEY. Well, you must be wondering, why do I like that stock? Well, I will say that to those of you that probably know me from being with me in chat, um, I usually sometimes like to spot trades that are uncrowded. And, uh, you know, had their earnings call 
uh, the other day. And the things that I like that they did talk about um, if you in the transcript is available for you guys if you want to read it. But I just want to get to the point. Um, what I did like is that they did uh, have some changes in the company. They're, they wiped out some debt. They also, um, you know, entered into a new credit agreement with a different lender. So they got rid of the other one that they were dealing with. And um, they have a new credit agreement for a $2.5 million revolving line of credit. It doesn't mature until next December 2019. Um, they also entered into an agreement to get the assets of Fulton Technologies and Mill City Communications for $1.7 million. And this deal is going to close in early January. So this is going to go um, onto the books. Um, they did have to give a deposit, obviously, for this. But um, this definitely represents the company's entry into the wireless infrastructure service market. Um, so I do like uh, what this company has been doing. And if you notice at the chart, I mean, it's not a wow volume. So it's, you know, certainly not something, you know, to run. You know what? I do like the weekly chart. And I like the direction of where this company is actually headed. So if you were to actually uh, look, consider trading the stock, I mean, for me personally, I really liked the volume surge that I saw. So, you know, normally on average, this had about 12,000 uh, average volume. And uh, finally, we saw some really good volume surge of 122,000 plus on this stock based on, you know, maybe some good news here. So I'm just saying keep a watch on the stock. I don't have a position, but definitely something for you to keep a watch on and, uh, you know, see if it would interest you as the chart starts to progress. Cause I do believe there will be a continuation on the stock and Jim over to you on the chart. Yeah. I'm looking at a yearly chart here. We have a yearly resistance right around 152 and you, as she said, stock pulled from 130 all the way up to 143 with a high of 147 Friday. And I'm noticing a lot of green candles on here in the past 10 days on this on this one right here. I have a yearly pivot point right around 138 with the first support right around 135 to maybe 132. So with a low low of maybe right around 130. So we're looking... I'm going to pull up a three-year chart just to kind of see where we're going with this thing. So even on a three-year, uh, we, 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 our base of our candles at a three-year high at 143. So we had a 160 high wick here, which was kind of like a low doji back on 12-4 last month. Well, that don't make sense. That's what it says, 12-4. Okay. So yeah, around 12.4 is what it said, and that's when we had the big breakout to 160, and it pulled right back. So let's keep this baby on watch. I'm going to look at a 20-day real fast, see what a 20-day chart looks like. We're definitely past the 20-day resistance, which was at 141, and it bounced up to 145 on Friday. So I would say maybe the resistance high on this thing could be right around 155 to 158, and then you're going to have some going to have a hard test to break it past that and the pullback we have we had a uh, looked to me like a little golden cross here on the 20 day with the 50 moving up over the 100 I don't see the 200 around at all so this thing could pull back to support level at 141 you know it's an open guess I guess keep an eye on it keep it on your watch list Vegas likes it and I'm going to be watching it next week to see where I can get in for a good entry and that would be A E Y. And All this, right. This new one that you're going to talk about next, Vegas, I kind of like it. Yeah, I actually like it too. So I want to talk about now F U V. So it's the F U V is the name of the ticker, which stands for uh, Fun Utility Vehicle. But the name of the company is called RC Moto. And uh, I do want to mention that um, you know this company is out in Oregon. And the chairman and founder of the company, Mark Frommeyer, he, um, you know, previously was one of the founders of a company called GarageGames.com, which was a software company that he actually sold to IAC back in 2007. And this guy is really smart. He's got an electrical engineering and computer science degree uh, from Berkeley. 
and uh, he's got a really good team here of people uh, that have a very good uh, backgrounds and you can read all about it uh, in the company bio but I really like this company because they recently Jim's showing you guys probably the website right now yep but um, this company did secure four and a half million dollars to initiate a production of ultra efficient electric vehicles which they believe they're going to deliver in uh, early 2019 so um, you know, this is actually good news for the company and, uh, they're able to basically take that money and look to deliver and assemble their first retail vehicle. So I think that's so exciting because when I looked at the website and I was looking at the vehicles, I was just thinking, you know what? I would love one of those. And I was thinking, how much are these, you know, little things and, and they look like a little golf cart and, um, they're actually going for base models. They're almost 12,000. So like 11,995 and uh, you can have them in a convertible model. And then obviously the doors can come on, come off. So I think it's a really good electric vehicle designed for everyday driving. And um, I think just to let you know, the company also has 3,250 customer pre-orders. So there's already a demand for the product. So that's really, really good. Um, so I'm really thinking this is a cute little company. You know, I wouldn't be surprised one day if this company gets probably bought out by someone uh, because they're into the little electric vehicles. I mean, can you imagine someone like a Tesla or like uh, NIO looking to buy this company? Um, but anyhow, Jim's going to talk about the chart, but I actually like the chart as well. Um, and I'm looking for a continuation uh, to continue on this particular stock. Yeah, I was just reading something here. It said you could rent an FUV in Eugene, Oregon for only $80 a day. Wow. So, you know, well, this you could know be what? like... Well, you know what? If you're even thinking to buy it, I mean, at least you could try it out first. And this could be and like... see if you like it. This could be like a small... And her and I were talking about it. And these would be great for like if, if you're in Cazamel and you're wanting to drive around on the island or resorts or it could be maybe a good startup business for a rental in, in some of these places well you know what this is like a little three you know it's a three-wheeler if you take a look at the pictures jim's showing yep. you jim i don't know if you're showing the pictures oh there. yeah i've showed it they but, got a wonderful website yeah they have a cool website and you know this co this company too uh rc moto um they're currently at the san diego international auto show um until this coming thursday so uh, they're definitely showcasing these uh, products. And, you know, I won't be surprised while they're at the auto show that they're going to get people placing orders for this. I mean, can you imagine in like cities where there's so much traffic and so hard to get into? Um, this is such a cute little thing. Yep. So I call it little thing because, you know, we call it the, I guess the FUV, the fun utility vehicle actually looks like fun. Like I want to try one of these out. So um, this looks great. Looks really cute. The stock looks great. I think the company has a good future because of all the orders they have. And um, well, let's see what happens. We're definitely oversold on this thing for the last month or so. This has had a low support average of right around 279. I would call it, you know, around 283. You know, two, three bucks to me is, is a support level on this stock right now with a pivot point area right around 344. So it, things really way oversold right now. And then Friday we had that good little breakout. I'm saying this thing's going to run up here to 262 and hesitate a little bit. Maybe pull back a little bit here. You know, it could have a little pullback support at around 225, that little spot right there. But I'm really liking this stock. I'm really liking the chart, and I like the company. And I'm going to do some more. And this is the first time I was introduced to this stock, by the way. So I'm going to have it on my watch list next week. But you can see the yearly high was at 532 with what my yearly high would be on a chart as a chartist artist at 468. Right there where that base is right there, see, that I just drew in there. So we'll bring this down to a 20-day just to show you how over, how, how it kind of been in this oversold territory and it finally broke out to resistance here at 245. So if we can break at 245, we're on the way up to 264. And 278. Now, if it pulls back from this 239 area, 
it could hit this 225 or maybe a low 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 at 210 and I'm saying that's probably over exaggerated I would probably say 215 would be a better entry if we had the pullback this is FUV and you talk about FUV well I'm having fun FUN <laughs> so the next All one right. next one uh, PQG yeah, so PQG Corporation, I mean, this is a bit of a higher price stock because, you know, not everyone likes to trade stocks under 10. So sometimes, you know, I had a couple of viewers message me saying, can you sometimes talk about stocks over 10? So I said, okay, I will, you know, if I find a good setup, I will mention it. So I do like PQG and, uh, you know, this company here um is an interesting company they're into you know friendlier products for a cleaner safer world they're into cleaner emissions they're into i'm sorry i'm hearing some noise in the background i think it's my <laughs> my dog uh scratching here um anyhow sorry about that so um the company here just recently had some news that they are reducing their debts okay and that is really really good um, they're located in Malvern, Pennsylvania, and uh, this company provides obviously specialty materials like chemicals, um, and they're paying down $55 million of their loan facility, which is going to reduce their debt outstanding by approximately $135 million. So they still have some debts. They're not debt free, okay? But the fact is that they are paying debt down is excellent. Uh, for the company. So I did notice also that the company uh, volume on the stock had a nice volume surge as well on uh, Friday. And I wonder if it's because of this uh, news here. Um, not major surge, but uh, still the volume's flowing through the last three days since Wednesday. So um, I think the company's on track for some potential good continuation here on the stock. And Jim, what are your thoughts on the stock? My thoughts is that I've been telling rumor that I had a crystal ball out last week, and I was saying the market's going to start rebounding a little bit. And I've noticed in a lot of the charts that I see that I've been watching, we've had like a good pullback in the past ten, two weeks, a real nasty pullback that was unnecessary. So everything I'm looking at, almost all the stocks that I'm looking at now have rebounded in the last week, a, quite a you know a pretty good little distance. And I can say that almost the same thing for this. This got oversold. Um, you can see in the past two two months where it just up and down, created a little channel going down here. This is what I like about this stock right now. You have this little wedge going down, which is uh, entitled for a, a, a breakout. And that when we had that on Friday, we had it. We had see we had this bounce right here. I'll magnify this up. These last three candles here. You can see we had a pretty hard sell-off for about two weeks right there, two and a half weeks. And I've been telling the room to get ready to start flagging these stocks that you like and, and look for the pullbacks to get in on the rebound. And if some did, yeehaw. If some didn't, that's all right. Now you know. Last three days, we bounced from a low of 1341 all the way up to a 15. That's a $2 bounce in three days. So, you know, if we'd identified this last week, we would probably jumped in this sucker right here because it created a little support right down here at that 1375 level. So I'm going to pull up what I call a 20-day chart, one hour. And again, you can see the breakout that we had Thursday, and then it continued Friday. And it kind of just hovered down there at the day low at that support level that I have here at 1510. Closed at 1513. So this could pull back a little bit. If it does, I think you'll be safe because I think it will automatically bounce right back up and try to break this level of this resistance here at 1541. So I'm definitely going to keep PQG on watch. I love the chart. I love the, the, the channel wedge breakout that, that came down, this little wedge right here, see? And then we had the breakout flag, and, it, and, and it's just easy to identify. And this is PQG, keep her on watch. I love it. And then the next one Vegas is wanting to talk about is going to be APHA. Okay, so this one here is interesting because, I mean, for those of you that follow these pot plays, um, APHA, Etheria, I mean, there's been a lot of talk 
up all over the news and even recently social media about a hostile takeover for this cannabis company. And, uh, you know, some people are saying it's, you know, not that great. I mean, they had uh, green growth brands that they publicly announced an all stock bid for Aferia. And um, they said that they would value the Canadian pot producer at more than $2 billion. And um, they value their own share green growth at $7 a piece, even though they only topped $5 a share Canadian uh, for the first time on the Canadian market. Uh, apparently, the two executives from the two companies met uh, to lay out the proposal and attempted to secure an exclusive deal. But I guess, you know, they frame it as a hostile takeover. So they have, um, you know, not really firmed anything up at this point. Um, you know, the major backer of green growth, for those of you that want a little bit of a background, is the billionaire Schottenstein family. And they actually partnered with Hefiria on a bid to run the medical marijuana dispensary in the Schottenstein's home state of Ohio back in 2017. So, you know, they reportedly share some players, uh, such as some uh, common board members. Uh, so that's kind of interesting. So I guess we'll see what is going to happen here with this particular stock. But uh, definitely there could still be some action here coming up. Uh, because this rumor and, you know, takeover is not firmed up yet. Uh, but there still could be some movement in the stock in the upward channel. So I'll turn it over to you, Jim, because, you know, I still actually think that the stock is headed uh, potentially a little higher than what it is at the moment. Yes. And, oh, wow. My little screen blacked out on me. I think it was sending me a message that, man, this is a great stock. Look at this thing. One year ago, this was at $19.81. I'm going to just look at a three-year chart real fast. I remember this stock. It ran all the way up here to 16 bucks. The IP, here's a three-year. And then all it's done is gone down since. And we're in this little channel right here, getting ready to break out. I love the way this last candle reacted Friday. That You know, it broke up at the high. So I'm going to pull this to a 21 year again just to have another look at it. Had a little roller coaster ride up here. And then it bounced up to resistance and it kind of pulled back, bounced up. And then we had a hard sell off here in the past oh, month or so that created this little channel. So we got a gap to fill. And actually the gap was down here. This low support was right around 675. Right around in that area right there. So I'm going to pull up a 20 day chart. And I'm really liking the 20-day also. Well, I say we got a low support right around 4 bucks, And it just came up and had that little breakout, pulled back, created a little support right here, right around 620 So keep this baby on watch. I think it can go a long ways. Um, resistance is right around 689 And that's APHA. I'll have it on my watch list Monday. All right. And uh, Jim wants to talk about one of the stocks that had a great, great move on Friday, VTVT, which yep. is VTV Therapeutics, right? Yes. So that one had uh, a very interesting move. And um, I'll let you talk about that one because you called this all day, nonstop. Yep. Maybe when others were out, Jim was still in. And uh, that's awesome. So I'm going to turn it over to Jim to talk about because I'd like to hear what he thinks about the stock this coming week. Well, VTVT, we had three big white soldiers right here. Bounced up, and then we had a high of 350. Well, the day before, it was down here at a yearly low at a buck. And I noticed right out of the gate, pre-market, that this baby was going to be a good runner because it ran from that dollar low yesterday all the way up to a dollar eighty and I just knew that this thing was going to pull back sorry about the technical difficulty there this screen keeps wanting to black out for some reason it's done it the last five times here in the last minute so we I'm going to pull this up to a uh, oh let's look at a five day 15 minute you could see how beautiful run it continued per, pretty much for a couple hours in the day and then I noticed a sign of weakness and I let the room know 
You know, so I'll maybe be playing the bounces up on this thing as it did. It just kept starting to wedge down. So the negativity was there. And now I've alerted this way up here at the high. If anybody was in it, to get out, take your profit, because it ran from one buck all the way to 350. You know, it stock that runs like that, you've got to know. You just got to take the profit. The, they'll always 100% pull back on you. If you can't, if you can't find the resistance, go with your gut and take your profit, because it could knife on you and you'd be out of it and you'd be stuck in a, you know, two dollars a share. So when a stock's up two dollars and fifty cents in a matter of two hours and it's a dollar penny stock, take your profit. That's all I've got to say about that. Nobody should get stuck in a stock like this when you when your hands are sweating and you're up two hundred and some percent. So it closed up one hundred and twenty percent. So I'm a great bottom player. I love to play these kind of stocks. I love to play the pullbacks. I notice after it had you know good news, and when it has good news, they usually rebound. Maybe we'll get a pullback to this area right around here of around two bucks. I don't want it to go no lower than two dollars. Then it'll be a, another bearish sign. If it can bounce off that two dollars and continue back up, you got a thirty cent flip there, for sure. So this is VTVT. I like the news. I like the chart action that we had on Friday. I called the bottom. I called the, the top. I called the, the, the pullback. And I just, I'm excited about this as much as I'm excited about any breakout stock when they pull back and, and you get opportunity. And that's VTVT. And you know what, Vegas? Are you I, in a good mood? I'm in a good mood. I think Jim might have a bonus to throw. Let's yep. hear the bonus. The bonus is something that I really care for, and that's Triple D. Oh, my goodness. You love Triple Ds. Yes, I do. So let's hear Triple D. And wow, look at the drop in the stock. Ladies Wasn't and gentlemen. 20 bucks? Vegas and I called this out when this thing was down below 10 bucks last year, or this year. Oh, and if you would have stuck in this stock... It would have ran all the way up. You might have had a little fake out here, you know, to the moving average of the 100 daily, 100 day. But it, look at that big gap it did there. See? That big gap right there? That's huge. And then it ran all the way to a high of 2178. And since then, we've had a pullback with some good bounces. And I've called a few of these little pullbacks and bounces. Then we had the big dip here. And it probably has to do something with the trade war or something, you know. But here we are again, triple bottom on the year. You know, I'll, I'll almost be a quad bottom here at 922. And I called this out in the room. I said, everybody keep an eye on DDD. You know, when when we were, when I was giving my speech, and I'm again, I'm going to give it again. My crystal ball last week said we were going to have a green we we're going to have a green week. And look at every four days in a row, this stock bounced. And I had the crystal ball out last Sunday. So I think we're still in, a, in, in an oversold territory on a lot of these stocks right now. And we're going to go into 2019. And we're going to see a rebound back to support levels. So this baby you could probably take up to 1180. Pretty much pretty, pretty close. I'd say easy 1180 if you want to swing it. I'm going to jump in and buy me 100 shares for fun. And just see how far I can take it. But I always try to look for a, a support entry. You know, I don't chase nothing. I, I'm not good at that. You know, it's every time I try to chase something, I get messed up. And so I'm going to be looking at a five-day right here. I can play these pullbacks real well. So I'm looking at around a little under 10 bucks, maybe around 975 for a support. And if that don't make cut the cake, maybe a 994 right here. But I like to see it get back down to, that's only a $0.10 cent drop. So let's see if we can get a little pullback on this. Just a little one to jump in. And I just want to see, I always look at the action of a stock before I make any trade. You know, I know when when I, see, when I spot a, a, a selling point or maybe three black crows might come into the scene like we had right in here. So we had the three black crows confirmation, then it bounced on up back to resistance there at 994 actually come up to 10 bucks and that was down here when it was right right around uh, 950 so we could put that 950 in there 954 just to see if this 
976 doesn't hold. But I'm very bullish on this stock right now. DDD into next year. And I think that wraps it up, Vegas. Well, you know what? That does wrap up. And, uh, you know, today is the 30th. And uh, obviously tomorrow is uh, New Year's Eve. And as I mentioned, a lot of people are still off. They won't be back till the 2nd. So if you are trading tomorrow, trade green. And uh, we will not have a market report uh, tomorrow because of New Year's Eve. And, you know, Jim has plans. I got plans. So we won't be having a market report Monday. Uh, but we will uh, look to make one definitely on Tuesday, New Year's Day. Um, him and I will collaborate because we want to prepare everyone for Gen uh, 2nd which uh, a lot of people are excited to come back to the new year and for some trades. So, you know, we like helping people and, and sharing ideas. So we will at least do a video on January 1st. Um, and you can uh, make sure you uh, subscribe and follow and hit the bell so that you can get notified when we release that video on the 1st. And that's all for now. So I hope you guys enjoy your weekend. And thank you all so much for all the great holiday wishes. And I wish everyone a blessed, blessed New Year's. And may all your dreams come true for 2019. And also, you can follow our links that down below, that uh, stock, stock to its link, and, and and join us there. We post alerts in there also. And like she said, hit that, you, any new people that watch the video, hit your subscribe button, ring that bell, and get our updates. We've got a lot of future stuff coming up next year. And Vegas and I are very excited about 2019. So this is the aftermarket report with Vegas and Jim, December the 30th. We want to wish everybody, a, we'll see you back here New Year's on the 1st. We want to wish you a happy New Year and hope your 2018 was very successful. If it wasn't, um, key into us. We'll try to help you out. Try to educate you a little bit. Try to educate us. We always love questions we reply to them and we learn from the beginners and we learn from the the novice trader so this is the aftermarket report with vegas and jim december the 30th 2018 and this is our last broadcast of the year and have a great day we love stocks